Hey folks, it's a nice winter day here. It looks like it's really cold. It's not too terribly bad, just a little bit below freezing. Winds are darn calm, so I'm spending a little bit of time this afternoon out at the range. Did a little bit of shooting already. Took a look at my group. And uh, you know, every time I look at my group, I like to group them into, you know, a really, a really small area. I like precision. And the title of my video was Fast Bullets Are More Accurate. Well, let me make a correction right away. And that is, I'm not so concerned today talking about accuracy as I am uh, concerned with precision. Or the other way of looking at it is in dispersion, a bullet's dispersion uh, in the group. That's what we measure. We measure dispersion or we measure precision. Well, let's think a little bit about what affects a bullet's precision or the dispersion of those rounds as you're shooting that group. Number one, one of the things to think about or to remember is that a lot of, of the factors involved in where does that bullet impact on target are determined the moment that you squeeze that trigger and that bullet exit the muzzle. Almost everything regarding dispersion is um, controlled by that bullet's initial exit from the muzzle. I'll talk about what isn't controlled here in just a little bit. So we've got a bullet and even if we're hand loading the most precision of rounds, there's always variability. If we measure to a ten thousandths of a grain um, for our powder charge, there's going to be differences between shot number one and two and three. And if we measure to a ten thousandth of a grain um, for the bullet, uh, its weight is going to vary. Sometimes we'll see small imperfections on the bullet itself. The length of the bullet can vary a little bit. The mepla of the bullet can vary a little bit. All of these seemingly tiny differences um, affect that bullet and where it's actually going to go as it leaves the, uh, leaves the muzzle and ends up striking the target somewhere downrange. Now, you don't have control over all of these different things, and there are also interacting variables going on inside that gun. And it is how fouled that barrel is, what's the temperature uh, from previous shots, it's a cold bore, you name it. There's lots of different things affecting that bullet, and the second bullet, and the third bullet in your groups, and fourth and fifth, whatever, uh, controlling where that bullet is going, setting its, truly setting its trajectory as it travels downrange. Now, the three factors that are primarily important, controlling dispersion of a group, are the drag of that bullet, the drag function, gravity, and wind. Now, wind is the only thing that comes into play after the bullet leaves the muzzle. And that's kind of a difficult variable, really difficult variable, because it's not always even the same. At 10 yards, 25 yards, 50 yards, 100, 900 yards, whatever it happens to be, the winds can change, not only in its intensity or velocity, but also in its direction. I've seen that happen lots of times as we start shooting longer range. So let's walk this through a little bit. Let's think about this. If the bullet and its dispersion in the group is controlled really by those three factors, let's, let's take each one on its own. We've already talked a little bit about wind, but probably aren't going to talk too much more about that. But let's now talk about the drag coefficient. You might say, well, I'm shooting the exact same bullet. I'm shooting a 230 grain Hornady A-tip bullet, which happens to be, by the way, a very 
consistent bullet. I've weighed those bullets and they are consistent, the same weight to a uh, grain, to a tenth of a grain. Yeah, that's good. But if I measured it to a hundredth of a grain or a thousandth of a grain, it's going to be different. Um, so there, even in those premium bullets, there are still some variability in those bullets. Now I've also watched the drag, the drag curve of those bullets and lots of different bullets now using my lab radar, some of the software that we've developed to take a look at that. And the drag of those bullets, even the same bullet again, will vary just a little bit, just a little bit uh, from shot to shot, bullet to bullet. It's not that the shot was so different, even if we have the same velocity or very, very similar velocities, the drag is just a little bit different, telling us that those bullets are just a little bit different. The powder charge, the pressure curve, just a little bit different. So that's automatically making an effect. Just like we said before, a lot of things are controlled the moment that that bullet is sent down the bore and out the muzzle. The second one there is gravity, gravitational force. Now, this is an interesting one to consider. You might say, and a lot of people like to say, well, gravity is a constant. Gravity is a constant. Um, it is 32 feet per second per second, right? 32 feet per second squared. Yes, that, that's correct. But what is that acting upon? It's acting upon the mass of that bullet. And if that bullet is not exactly the same size, you better believe that the way gravity acts upon it, or it's not the same weight, the same mass, then you better believe that the gravity is just a little bit different. Now, when we shoot precision, we are sometimes focusing on a tenth of an MOA, a hundredth of an MOA difference. And so this helps explain why we see those differences, even when the shooter shot absolutely consistently. Now, here's something to think about. And that's what I said earlier, that fast bullets are more accurate, or more correctly, let me say, fast bullets are more precise. Because every one of the factors that we've talked about that affect dispersion are not controlled by distance to the target. They are a function of time. The time spent of that bullet flying from the shooter's position to that target. Every one of those. Gravity. If you want to somehow do a little test, I could take a bullet. If this is my shooting position, I could take a bullet and drop it. And by the time that that bullet hits the ground here, if I could shoot it at the exact same time, shoot that bullet at the exact same time that I drop it, I know that that bullet impacted the ground at the exact same moment. The effect of gravity has nothing to do with distance. And of course, wind. A lot of you who shoot precision, uh, long range type of shooting, you know that wind is, wind is the bogger, right? It's always a real bogger. And the, um, the amount of time that wind is allowed to push on your bullet, well, that's what really affects that bullet's position or the wind deflection, these sorts of things. And in fact, the most important part of a bullet's flight regarding wind is those last few yards, because that is when it is slowest, and that is when then wind has the most potential to move that bullet. It doesn't have anything to do that that's a thousand yard uh, shot. It has to do with the amount of time that the wind has to affect the bullet. So, in essence, fast bullets are more precise. Now, does that mean that we should take every one of our rounds and put more powder in them, make them go faster? No, no, no. No, you're getting it wrong if you've made that assumption. Remember, the, the largest part of that dispersion budget is what is that bullet doing the moment it leaves the muzzle, right? You've got to do your, your job, all that good stuff, all these things we talked about. 
to get a load to um, shoot precisely. That pet load that you, you've been working on, you have to consider barrel harmonics, optimal charge weight, all this different stuff. If we start increasing the velocity, we may move out of that uh, harmonic node area, or we're way outside uh, optimal charge weight, and we've got standard deviation of muzzle velocities of 50, 60, 70 feet per second. See, that would then defeat the entire purpose. But if all things are exactly the same, we are looking at a bullet that shoots precisely. It's a good pet load at 2,700 feet per second. And that same bullet, for some reason, for some reason, this is hypothetical, for some reason it also shoots so well at 3,000 feet per second, well, long range shooting, the faster bullet, 3,000 feet per second in our hypothetical example, is going to be the more precise bullet. It's going to exhibit less dispersion simply because it gets there faster, less time for all these other factors to act upon it. Hey, I'm interested in your thoughts about this. What do you think about this? I've got some links in the description below, some papers and some other things where folks essentially are saying the same thing that I'm thinking about, and I've been thinking about this for a while. Nice day to be out here thinking about precision, thinking about dispersion, but you know, it's a whole lot more fun to shoot. So I'm wrapping this up. I'm going to get back to shooting. Thanks for watching.